You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by NASDAQ. From its inception, NASDAQ has been an innovator and agent of change in the financial markets. It's in our DNA. From the development of electronic trading to our drive to bring enhanced functionality and world-leading technology to our suite of six options exchanges, we aim to exemplify customer focus, consistent technology, and streamlined solutions. In 2019, NASDAQ proudly launched the NASDAQ 100 Volatility Index, ticker symbol VOLQ, to its suite of exchange indexes. The VOLQ index uses only at-the-money options, offering the investment world a measure of volatility that directly points to the NASDAQ 100. Since then, CME launched VOLQ Futures, VLQ, and we've launched NASDAQ 100 Volatility Index Options, ticker symbol VOLQ, which are AM-settled index options on the VLOQ index that provide investors with a new way to gauge forward-looking equity market swings. Learn more about these exciting new volatility products at www.nasdaq.com slash VLOQ. You can find more on NASDAQ's full suite of index options products at www.nasdaq.com slash NASDAQ hyphen 100 hyphen options hyphen XND hyphen NQX hyphen NDX hyphen VOLQ. NASDAQ, leading the U.S. options market and continually rewriting tomorrow. And now it's time for a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means we are back once again, one final time on the on-demand side of the network. Yes, it is time once again for Volatility Views, the premier program. For volatility traders. My name, of course, Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com. If I sound a little bit different, it's because I'm still coming to you from the Southern Studio. Picked a good week to get the heck out of Dodge. Sounds like Chi Town has descended into uh, the mouth of hell for a week or so over there with all that smoke coming in from the Canadian wildfire. So if I was still there, I might be getting the heck out of Dodge anyway. So we'll be hanging out down here in the Southern Studio for another week or so. Let the smoke and the dust clear, but the shows still keep coming at you, listeners, because neither rain nor sleet nor Canadian hellfire smoke can stop our network from its appointed rounds. Of course, if you do like what you hear, this show, any other show on the network, make sure you do throw some stars our way or whatever platform you're listening on, if it's YouTube, a like, whatever the case may be, if you're getting it via the mobile app and the app stores, uh, review there, all that stuff helps people discover the content. And of course, if you personally want to discover more content, then the place to go is theoptionsinsider.com slash pro, or for you cool kids, haven't thrown those out there in a while, but slash secret club. Get in there. Today, the last day to get your name in the hat for the June Pro Trading Crate. Don't tell the Rock Lobster. He gets all angry at me. But the truth is, we give you folks some really cool stuff. So <laughs> get your name in the hat 
end of June for the June Pro Trading Crate, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro. Of course, all the live, all of the 200 plus exclusive episodes waiting there for you. A lot of early tastes of content as well before everybody else gets it. All sorts of fun. And of course, the cherry on the top, the Pro Trading Crate. Don't miss it. Theoptionsinsider.com slash secret club. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. What's not a secret, though, is who is joining us on the old program today. First, let's go out to the dark, stormy, but surprisingly smoke-free shores of Maine, even though he is literally a stone's throw from the border of Canada. <laughs> he is the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com. Mr. G, welcome back to Ye old Program, sir. It, I feel like it's been a while. To, since the law views. I know Sebastian loves this show, so been. he's always like, I, I'm doing the show. I'm the meatball's the show, just so. been gobbling up this, this seat lately, been elbowing you out. He he has, he has. Uh, I believe he is in transit to said Chicago. And you know what? Uh, Maine, we don't brook with that sissy Canadian smoke, so we just ignore it. He's and he's able to get into Chicago. I'm hearing horror stories of people not even be able to, all flights being diverted and stuff because of the smoke, so... Yeah. yeah, I I don't I have no idea. I'm just I I did my flying last week and I will not do it again for a very long time. So <laughs> you did I'm your done. one one flight every decade. <laughs> yes. I only visit my mother who is recently widowed, so that's the only reason I will fly now forever. There you go. And occasionally to Chicago to see me, but that's about it. And that's occasionally about. to Chicago to see you cuz you give me a t-shirt. And then also go. once in a while when you come to Chicago, you see this person our guest today, the once future and indeed now present. He has the piece of paper. At least he tells me he does. I've never seen the piece of paper. But he tells me he has the piece of paper saying he is now the present Dr. Vix as well, a.k.a. Mr. Russell Rhodes, holding court down there at the Kelly School of Business, educating all of those future bright minds about them, our derivatives. Mr. Rhodes, welcome back to the show, sir. It is so funny. I, 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 I'm going to be positive, and then I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to criticize you and, and be a little negative before we're done. Let's here. go for it. First off, my kid is staring at me through the. I'm on a podcast, honey. Thousands of people are listening. Go do whatever you're going to do. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you like that? Oh. No, if Whoa. if they're if my kids come in here when I'm teaching a class and the camera's on, they're on camera. That's how they learn not to walk in here. Ah. All right, back to where I was. First off, it's weird you bring this up, but I actually just hung my PhD on the wall. And because I like to tweet and I like to humble brag, I will tweet a picture of that out for proof. Okay, documentary evidence. We will finally have so, it, yes. Okay, and I, 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 I've done this for a decade and I've never offered any advice to you ever. Mark, don't do the... Joe Biden whisper thing on microphone. <laughs> you, that's that's who I thought of when you said that. <laughs> See, I got both of you. I got the Rock Lobster, and now I got uh, we're, I got the, on, yeah. Mr. F- <laughs> Mr. Doctor Vix. Just going political as soon as the yeah. show starts. Going right there. Uh, let's just keep on rolling instead, listeners. Maybe I'll whisper for the rest of the show just to make it just to make them happy as we keep on rolling right on into the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the Volatility Review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Volatility Review, the portion of the show where we do just that. We break down the week that was, and indeed still is, from all trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity, all sorts of fun perspectives. And coming into the end of the week, we are seeing a heck of a lot of green back on the screen. So our dalliances with red last week and the beginning of this week seem to be in the rearview mirror, at least for now. Uh, the S&P up over 1%, almost one and a quarter percent. Uh, the Nasdaq up one and a half percent, and the Dow closing in up about eight tenths of a percent. All this going into what is effectively a holiday weekend. It's not quite because we are open on Monday, but then we have the July Fourth holiday on Tuesday. A weird Tuesday holiday coming up, listeners. So intriguing stuff there. Normally going into this weekend, we'd see vol coming in, but now factor in a little bit of upside, and we're seeing vol 
pretty much back down to where we were this time a week ago after dallying with a little bit north throughout the early portion of the week. In fact, when we kicked off the show, we were at exactly a 13 handle in VIX. We were up about a tenth of a point, so pretty much unched on the week. Let's give it some time. I think it needs to catch up to my vol prognostication, which I do believe is a little bit lower. But the show is young. We shall see how vol evolves. If it continues this pace, we could be right at my prediction by the end of the show. A VVIX 83 down 6, so coming in quite a bit. It was threatening t- triple digits not too long ago. And now coming back the other direction, vol Q 17.5 down about 3 tenths of a point. So a whole heck of a lot of nothing net. Week on week, even if in between we did flirt with some other more impressive levels. Let's go out now to the man who loves himself some whispering on a podcast, the once and future Dr. Vix. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, sir, what caught your eye out there in the markets this week? I think the term structure has been, uh, and I'm trying to pull up my term structure chart real quick. Uh, it, it appears that, uh, the August is coming coming closer and closer in line with July. And I saw some people tweeting about that earlier this week, saying they were going to short July and go long. Uh, I'm sorry, short August and go long July. I think they're probably feeling pretty, pretty happy about that. Uh, also, it, it's kind of interesting that the curve's flat. It, it's kind of flat-ish going into the fall. Usually it's pretty steep. But you got September at 1767, and then you go out to November at 1897. Only about a buck thirty there. That's that's going to get pretty steep uh, if nothing dramatic happens and we get past Labor Day. Intriguing stuff. Of course, we will dive into the term structure even more in a little bit out there, listeners. But first, we'll go out to the dark, stormy, some might say horrific, but oddly enough, not smoke-covered shores of Maine. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, what caught your eye in the world of volatility this week, sir? Um, well, I, a couple of things. I added some. Uh, I added some of those. Uh, the um, uh, the spikes uh, index ETFs to my ticker list. Oh, oh. there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, I'm trying to find them right now because I just lost my ticker list. So. <laughs> so, Bear with me. I've I've got them because I just happen to have something up that has a list on them. If you give me one second, I got it. Um. But I, I found them, you know. So, uh, so those are spikes ETFs. Um, as far as VIX goes, yeah, I'm just, I I'm just agree with Russell. Uh, you, we have kind of a, you know, kind of a, a steepening contango. Um, the premiums have come down somewhat over the last week. Uh, premiums relative for this, for this amount of time left to expiration. How I. We have our uh, highly technical option pit uh, fair value indicator for where the VIX future should be. And it's just like it's starting to look like a regular like a, a stock market that's expecting lower volatility. That's what it looks like. I mean, we got a three day weekend coming up. There was a little bit of putting the weekend back in yesterday, it felt like. And now it's kind of come out again. Um, so, you know, we expect and we've got a half a day. We have a half a day Monday, so there's a little bit of you know uh, vol in vol out um, depending. And at this point, you know, just it's there's again also there looks like a little bit of window dressing <laughs> on a lot of the big tech stocks today, uh, which has been kind of a nice uh, kind of a nice little run. But from a vol point of view, it's a very boring. Uh, very boring, normal-looking contango curve, and it's getting a little bit more normal uh, as VIX gets back to 12, and uh, the future premiums, you know, kind of get to wherever they're. I like we look at. I look at a historical forward vol average and uh, how much out of line they were historically. So for a long time, they've been relatively expensive. Um, maybe just because the vols have been higher. Uh, I'm not sure exactly why, but now they're sort of coming back down into what I would call a more something that I, I have observed more prior to COVID than post COVID. So this whole vol regime that we were in for COVID, we are, I mean, we're almost, we're almost out of it until I think until we can actually hold some 12, the 12 handle for a while, I would just to call the COVID thing done. Um, but it, it's a three, it's been a, as far as like how I follow vol. Um, 
because I follow it by a uh, sort of like a vol regime. Um, and then I, I define that by uh, you're in a vol regime until you make the prior low after, after a gap. So we are right now in a three year gap still from where we were. We have not been able to maintain a 12 handle yet. Um, so, the, so there's still whatever's going on is still going on. You know, there's the Fed, there's inflation, there's all kinds of stuff that got heaped on top of the pile. But um, for, from the last, I would say, big spike, uh, we are still on the way down from that big spike. Spike is hard it is for believe three years later. So, um, but we're getting there. I mean, everything is pointing to us wanting to get to that lower, uh, to a lower number and stay there. But, uh, you know, if we keep rallying 1.2%, <laughs> VIX is going to stop going down. Um, so that's, I think that's, that's where we are from a vol point of view. So, uh, you know, if people are wondering why isn't VIX 20, uh, <laughs> because, um, realize vol is about 50% or 40 or 60 or 70% of what it was last year in the S and P 500. So we've had huge, uh, decreases and all that stuff. And the market is just starting to appear like, a a normal equity bull market. I hate to say it, but that's what it looks like. By the way, sir, your, your tickers you were looking for, good old Spike X, that's the one X flavor. And then, yes. uh, then Spiky, good old Spiky, the one and a half, the little bit more jazzy, a little bit more jazzed up ETPs. We haven't talked about them in a while, uh, but they, they, they seem like they're starting to get a little bit more intriguing. What was it that made you add them to your watch list, sir? Oh, you know, it's because I'm, I'm starting to collect stocks at one-year lows. <laughs> oh well there you go they were oh, there and they, and they popped up there DXX, you, <laughs> so i mean i'm not buying them yet but i just you know once you get to this uh, a market which i i would call or you know we have been kind of in a bull market i don't know if you call it a bull market but it's certainly swinging up from the bottom now for a while so when so many stocks are starting to just move in one direction like clearly the momentum is still with all the you know you know Apple, we'll cover that on options oddities, but like a <laughs> guy buying 100,000 calls yesterday and somehow Apple jumps almost 2% on the last day of the quarter. It's like magic. Um, but uh, I, you start looking at, okay, what is the market ignoring? Uh, so I like, I like to see trends of what the market is ignoring. So I start collecting all the names um, that are at one-year lows. So uh, the market's ignoring... Uh, obviously, the vol ETPs are all at <laughs> the all-time lows. Um, a lot of mineral stocks, uh, a lot of uh, natural gas stocks, um, and a lot of surprisingly drug make drug makers. Um, so you never know when you look around to start, you know, because that's generally stocks that were higher a year ago uh, can get back there. So I find it a lot easier for stocks to go back up that way. So that sets up option plays and things for me, for uh, my students. So you got to start with names that can go a long way. So, you know, I don't know how much higher NVIDIA can go, but I, I would not get in the way of any, I would not get in the way of any of those stocks, Apple, NVIDIA, whatever, Microsoft, who knows how high they'll go. Um, so, but I also want to look for other stocks that could have a 20 or 30% return year. So that's where I start. And that's how I came up with those names. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, they were, I was looking at the bottom of the barrel, Seth. <laughs> you have good timing because both of them hitting new 52-week lows today. If you're wondering, listeners, our old friend Spike X at a 965 right now. So a new 52-week price low there. And not a lot of options paper there, which is why we haven't really touched on it again in a while. A uh, Good old Spikey, though. Getting a little bit more active. Obviously, it's continuing to erode 543. So think of it as kind of like a UBXY out there, listeners. And But this one actually looks like developing a little bit of options paper. The ADV is up to a whopping 90 contracts. I mean, it's not euro dollars, but then again, <laughs> uh, it's also not the zero that it used to be. And it looks like there are there is some paper open there, including 436 of the D21s open up in SPKY. Uh, spoiler alert, I don't think they're getting there anytime soon. But hey, crazier things have happened for those. So intriguing stuff. So a little bit of paper starting to float its way into good old spiky, which is always fun to see as we keep on rolling into what Mr. Rhodes was just talking about, all things vol surface right now, coming into showtime. As he mentioned, 
It is pretty flat. We're seeing that front portion of the curve kind of moving in lockstep. July down almost nine-tenths of a point from where it was this time last week, about 0.85. And August down almost the exact same amount, down about 0.9 out there. So we're starting to see this whole curve shift down in the front portion just kind of moving in lockstep out there. Obviously, June went off the board recently, so no more June out there. Uh, But intriguing stuff. And if you look across the term structure all the way out to the beginning of next year, let's go out to February, you're still below a 21, even out there about a 20 and two thirds is about as high as we get. So uh, they are doing their darndest as the rock lobster alluded to wring all of the vol possible (laughs) out of this marketplace. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, you kind of mentioned at the top of the show that what's really catching your eye out there right now is the term structure and just how flat it is. Anything else really catching your eye out there in the vol surface this week, sir? Uh, not not really in the vol surface. Um, I've gotten some questions about V stocks and not V stocks, sorry, VVIX and why you know why it holds up better than spot VIX. And I think when we start talking about trades and where the interest is in uh, options uh, over the past couple of weeks, which is mostly buying calls, take advantage of VIX being at low levels. Uh, you know that's one of the things that keeps VVIX from you know, mirroring the down move in um, in VIX. In fact, I think VVIX was lower than where we are right now. Yeah, back in early March, it was well under 80. We're above 80 now. And you know, back then, VIX was not. I don't think it was pr- approaching a 12 handle in early March, uh, if memory serves me correctly. Um, I don't remember a lot from early March. So you guys have to help me on that one. <laughs> what could have possibly <laughs> impacted your memory I don't know. between I'm, now and I'm early March? Of, we don't want to talk about that anymore. So we, we talked about that ad nauseum. But you, uh, back, you know what? VIX was at uh, seventeen or nineteen sixty when uh, back in early March when VVIX was around um, six around seventy six. Now VVIX is a little bit higher and VIX is six points lower. That's where I was going with that. You got me scared at first when you said people were asking about uh, good old V stocks. I was like, "Oh no, is is Oh no, I'm is getting Putin, a lot of questions about Putin, the, I get questions about that too. <laughs> is Putin launching another invasion? It seems like the only time anybody cares about V stocks is when uh, Putin is up to no good over there in yeah. Eastern Europe. So, intrigue. I would love to see V stocks do more paper like I talking about Spikey. I, li- I like to see all these products uh, do more paper for whatever reason, you know, V stocks only tends to shine when uh, when horrible things are happening on the European continent. But a uh, conversation for another day. Mr. Mister Rock Lobster, sir, what's catching your eye out there in the ever-flattening term structure, sir? Uh, well, I kind of already, you know, uh, expounded on that. Uh, hard, to, hard to, when Russell's here, you know, he kind of covers things pretty solidly. So it's hard to beat Dr. Vix at his own game. Um <laughs> But no, I it's just wondering if we can actually hold some of these lower numbers. But yeah, the the term structure is flattening out. It's getting pretty normal. Um, another thing too is like the back end now is right around twenty again. So you know, way back when when I actually when I first started with Mark, I just remember you know the back end of the term structure is always stuck to twenty, and it never really <laughs> moved from there. And the front kind of moved around a little bit. Um, but if you look at like the last you know, the last year where the back end of that curve was hugely bid. Um, And I think the biggest thing in the last six months, I was just looking at a, if I looked at VIX on January 1st, and I want to just do a little historical thingy here. um, Like the back end was kind of pricey at the beginning of the year, as I recall, because there was still, Multiple, multiple questions about what was going on. Yeah, so I go right into expiration. Let's see. So I think just vol overall has been pulled down uh, tremendously. Um, yeah, so in January when we were, which I like midway through January when the market was rallying pretty good, the back end of the curve was almost 25, and today it's just under 21. So all the vol has come down um you know, again, considerably with VIX coming down as well. So, uh, and that was kind of a January curve was very steep. Um, so I just think overall the, the, the amount of all coming out of the, 
of the equity markets has been considerable since then. So that's, I mean, that's kind of how bull markets happen. You need a, mm -hmm. you know, you need vol to come in and all of a sudden the sell-offs just aren't that big anymore. I mean, they happen, they still will happen, but, um, the market is no longer expecting them to happen. And, uh, people are no longer paying up for, <laughs> for puts anymore because they don't work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're buying SPY puts or SPX puts, uh, you would have to be Johnny on the spot to get any kind of good clothes on them in the last two or three months. So it doesn't mean it can't happen. And we did have all that. Uh, the banking crisis, which I believe lasted all of 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we have our, our, our head income trader, Bill Griffo, and he's like, oh, well, you know, Fed just says, OK. You know, you can change a bond in for cash anytime you want if you need it. Here we are, and that was it. Crisis over. So I'm, um, uh, I don't know. Like this, it worked. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Stocks went straight up. What else are you gonna say? So, um, and onward we go. Someday we'll have to pay the bill for all this, but it ain't today. And the vol curve saying it ain't tomorrow I was about either. To say it, it ain't today, mm -hmm. sir. That's definitely not <laughs> the case. But what we do have to potentially pay the bill for, or at the very least, regale the saga of is, of course, Russell's ongoing odyssey that is his VIX upside trade. It was all kicked off by a question one of our pro listeners had for him in one of our pro Q&A sessions. I believe at the end of last year, the question was, if VIX was going to pop, let's say up to 30 or beyond over the course of the next six months, how would you plan for that? How would you prepare for that using VIX options? And it kicked off this ongoing saga. Russell didn't just go out and buy the June 30, 40 call spread. No, no, he did a little bit more work than that. He went out and actually traded and rolled, had risk reversals on and was constantly evolving and also writing about the saga over there on his sub stack. So hopefully if you follow him listeners, you've been checking that out. But Mr. Rhodes, June is now in the books, at least from an options perspective, one more day for the trading month here. Uh, but intriguing stuff nonetheless. I, I am sad to report that the much anticipated VIX upside <laughs> did not materialize, sir. Uh, so walk our listeners through the saga, how it came sure. to a conclusion and maybe what plans you have going forward for the rest of the year, sir. Well, first off, and, and you usually uh, you usually help me on this one and say, uh, and this was not your idea, Russell. It was somebody else that was looking for a spike in VIX, and and I I, I didn't necessarily agree with their outlook, but I took what their outlook was, and it was actually I did the pro Q and A on December eighth. Uh, and uh, right after that, I was like, well, why don't I? You know, they I was asked how would I go about preparing my portfolio for a spike in VIX. And you know, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure you've got exposure to the near-month contracts because they give you the most bang for your buck when VIX moves up. They have uh, one of the things that, that I, I came up with while we were at SIBO was uh, the delta of the VIX future relative to the index. And that number that number's around 50 or 60 at best until you get about a week before expiration. And then it pops up to around 80 or 90. Uh, it's just a, a, amazing how it sits around there and then waits till we get close to expiration. But that means you want to be in the front month options. And uh, one of my favorite structures is uh, taking in a credit for a put spread and buying a call or taking in a credit for a put spread and buying a call and then selling a farther out of the money call if I didn't, if, if the premium wasn't so hot on the puts, which it generally is not. In fact, I had somebody that commented on one of the uh, blog postings, actually the last blog posting, and they noted that my um, short my short put strikes in uh, implied volatility was around 21%, while the call that I was long in the spread had implied vol of about 140%. <laughs> Which means you're you're <laughs> selling a cheap option and buying an expensive one. Welcome that, to that's, VIX. That, that's for, just the, yeah, that's for just whoever the pointed that VIX. out. <laughs> yeah. Well, and but but the the thing with respect to that is that call implied vol. It it actually starts climbing as we get closer to expiration because those options do hold their value, which is one of the benefits behind that structure where you sell the put spread and you own a call, and it's probably still got some value 
uh, even a week, you know, even the Friday before expiration, which is when I normally do my rolling trades. So the outcome of all of this was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, uh, an initial trade, six rolls the Friday before expiration in December, January, February, March, April, May, and June. Um, the, uh, the question was a spike through June, so I did not roll to July, uh, which I'm kind of happy about uh, at this point. Uh, one time, one of those seven trades actually made money. Uh, the March expiration, uh, which kind of coincides with that time frame that I was just talking about in early March, where the uh, where VIX was somewhat elevated, I think, on the Silicon Valley Bank thing, uh, that spread made uh, two dollars and thirty five cents. The rest of them lost anywhere between six cents and three dollars and seventy cents. And uh, the net result of all seven trades was a loss of eight dollars and forty four cents per spread. Which again, this is something that that you put on for a spike in volatility. If you don't get it, you do expect losses. I'm not happy with with how substantial those losses were. Uh, so what I did after I completed the trade, I went back and I took a look at, well, what if I um, just bought the 50 Delta call and didn't go through all that trouble? Well, if I had just bought the 50 Delta call, um, I would have made money on one trade and lost money on the other six. <laughs> And the net PL would have been eight, a loss of 8.91. So there wasn't a whole lot of advantage of going through that extra trouble and not just buying an out of the money call. I'm starting to think being clever is not worth it. I'm going to do more work on it. And then I also took a look at buying the 50 Delta call and shorting the 25 Delta call. Uh, and uh, part of the attraction there was, you know, VIX had not gone much above the low 30s over the whole, you know, basically ever since we we were we came back down from the COVID thing. Uh, any spike that we got in 2022 uh, was low 30s at best, even though we were, you know, rates were tightening the whole time. So those 25 Delta calls had a strike of anywhere between 26 and 40, depending on what was going on in the market. Uh, the net result there was one profit, again, with the Mar March spread, but the net profit and loss was only a loss of 396. So I'm starting to wonder if we should just be buying call spreads and not do all that stupid stuff with the puts. Well, kind of what your friend pointed out there too, right? You're you're yeah. you're selling a little bit of a little bit higher implied vol levels on those on those far out of the money calls. No matter which way you do it, you kind of point out a one salient fact when doing any of this kind of hedging, quote unquote, with VIX is you have to have something to offset just buying the calls, yeah. right? You can't go out and just load up on the calls willy nilly because then your losses will be atrocious. Everything I've ever seen, you know, all the analysis done for years at RMC, I've seen all sorts of funky ways to do it. Calendars, using puts like you did, using some sort of ratio, call verticals or flies, you name it. But it all boils back down, listeners, to finding some way to pay for some of that call, at least, so you can finance some of your seat at the table until you get that moment, like maybe in March, where you can actually make a little bit of money on these trades. But intriguing stuff. You did mention you're happy you didn't put it on for July. So is that it? Are we done? Are you going to keep... <laughs> We're done. You're, going to keep, you're not going to keep analyzing for the second half of the year, sir? Nope. The question was, are you going to do... And it's, it's not laziness or anything. It's just that's what the question was. Um, so I, I stuck with it. If anybody wants to throw a new question out oh, there for the next six months, I am wide open. So Get he's he's Twitter. angling for a return visit to the pro Q and A hot seat listeners, and I guess the first question that needs to come in is, what about the next six months? <laughs> and then we have yeah! then we have contents. So he can only act upon official questions from our pro Q and A. If I just toss it to him here, that is not an official question, listeners. So so bear that in mind. Get your questions ready. I guess our producers will have to uh, book him post haste. Uh, for a pro Q and A uh, coming up soon, so intriguing stuff. I don't think anyone expected it to work out, but in interesting to see you know the depth of the losses they're in. Uh, it is kind of just emblematic again uh, of some of the challenge of doing this. Whether you're buying VIX calls, whether you're buying S and P puts, either way, it's a challenging way to go. You got to find some way to finance that seat at the table, listeners. Otherwise, you're, you're shedding dollars 
let's see what's going on out in VIX land. VIX is shedding value right now. Let's see if it's putting up some numbers commensurate with that. And again, we're going into what is effectively a truncated holiday weekend. Speaking of which, we're getting some questions in the chat here. Uh, they want to know, uh, are the markets open on Monday and are there going to be shows on Options Insider on Monday? Option God is asking. And the answer is kind of yes and kind of no. <laughs> uh, the markets are it's only a half day because of that weird Tuesday holiday. You know, usually we get a long weekend with these holidays. We get a Tuesday now. So the markets are only really a half day. So I'm not a monster here. I'm not going to make, make people come in and do option block and stuff. They want to be, they want to have a long weekend. I think Tucson is traveling with his family. I'm not going to make them try to come in and beam in on the show for when the sh- markets are already closed by the time we'd be doing the show. Uh, so the markets are, yes, half open on Monday, and there will be no live shows on Monday. So just to, your notice there for uh, OG and everybody else who's asking that out there in the chat. Let's get out to VIX land. And like we said, not a heck of a lot of paper going up, but maybe a little bit more than you might expect, given the fact that we're heading into a effectively truncated holiday week. 489,000 contracts on the tape right now, the ADV is 809. So as you'll notice, moving back down in the wrong, excuse me, in the wrong direction, down 27,000 contracts, I should say, from where it was this time last week. Still north of 800,000. Let's break down a quick top 10 out here. Then I want to get into what all of you are here for. And by the way, I don't have that drop on this portable machine, so we won't hear the live. Few live folks won't hear Russell's weekly rundown. Hopefully, you folks after the fact will be able to cut it in. But uh, yes, uh, no live Russell's Weekly Rundown drop this week, which is, I'm, trust me, I'm much more upset about that than you listeners. Uh, number 10, 196,000 of the SEP 45s. Number 9, 218,000 of the AUG 20s. Number 8, 218,000 as well of the July 21s. By the way, you'll notice all calls all the time again this week. Not a single put to be found. Number 7, 239,000 of the July 25s. Number six, 245,000 of the AUG 25s. Number five, 258,000 of the AUG 60s, 6Os. Number four, 283,000 of the July 22s. Number three, 291,000 of the July 20s. Number two, 296,000 of the July 23, easy for me to say, of the July 23s. And rounding out our top 10 this week, 336,000 of the SEP 60s. So the AUG 60s and the SEP 60s topping out our most active strike list here in terms of the most optimistic, shall we say, strikes. And the SEP 60s taking the top spot here. A very intriguing, I believe that is part of that one by three we talked about a month and change ago here on the show. But you're all really here for Russell to break down the week. So, Mr. Rhodes, what you got for us? A little bit of the old Russell's Weekly Rundown. Now, Russell's Weekly Rundown. And now... For Russell's Weekly Rundown. <laughs> doot, 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 doot. All right. Going through the list here. Well, where's the music? I, I know. The that's music. what I was I just doing. went through. I don't have it on, on the portable studio here. There. So the, the editors I, will have to cut it in after the fact. So the on-demand folks will get a little taste of it. You live listeners, unfortunately, will not. As, right. as usual, I get screwed yes. doing this show. Umbridge. Yeah, as usual. I know. Umbridge for I know, you. You're, the you're, Umbridge crate. You're, you're the big you you jog and you listen to that theme music, don't you? You just love it. All right, Monday. Uh, this is kind of fun. A seller of it, it, this. I almost feel like Elon Musk or uh, SBF or some some freaking goofballs behind this trade. Seller of 444 VIX, July 12th, 1450 puts. Anybody want to guess the price? 44 cents. Somebody really likes the number four. Um, the future was at 1571 and the spot at 1475. Not looking too good on that trade uh, right now. Uh, then there, also in money, there was a buyer of 300 of the July 5th, 25 calls at 11 cents. Um, I The future was at 1501 and the spot was at 1403. Uh, I was, my automatic assumption was this was a short cover. It was not. Uh, in, the open interest was around 400. Now it's around 700. So, and then I went back a little bit and they, they've been buying these in small lots for a little while to work up to a position. They think something's going to happen over the fourth, the, over the, the 25. Three, yeah. The, wow. I know the three, the three and a half day, uh, I'm calling it a three and a half day uh, Independence Day holiday. 
He thinks uh, gonna, Putin's going to light things thinks, up over the holiday he weekend. He thinks something is going to happen. <laughs> so I'm not going out for fireworks or anything. I'm scared now. Yeah, you're staying home now. Now, so get this. So we had the seller of 444 of the July 12th, 1450 puts. The next day, seller of 443 of the VIX July 12th, 1450 puts at 54 cents. Doing a little bit better now. Uh, the future was at, the funny thing, is, the future was at 1515 and the spot had worked its way down to 1362 by then. I've also got a uh, seller of the uh, VIX July 5th, 18 puts for 355. Uh, who bought the July 5th 14 puts for 38 cents. They got a credit of 317 here. Uh, They need the market, what, above 1483 to break even on this. Uh, If we get July 5th VIX settlement on uh, uh, next week of 18 or higher, they get to keep that whole credit of 317. But again, Another bullish trade using the July 5th options. Uh, the future was at 1461 and the spot was 1370 there. Uh, no more funny lots of the July 12th, 1450 puts. That's what they did. On Wednesday, somebody sold 4,995 of the July 5th, 22 calls for a nickel. That does appear to be a short cover. Uh, God, I hope that's a short cover. I'll say, I hope and, that is. Otherwise, yeah. he, he needs to talk to that other guy who bought a bunch of them expiring for 11 cents on the 25 strike. They need to have a conversation. It, unless it's the same person who needs to go look in the mirror for a while. Um, also, somebody in two different lots, two different lot, 2,500 lots, sold the July 5th 24 calls for three cents and two cents. So we'll say two and a half cents. That was an exit as well. Um, even though there's a, it's very unlikely that VIX is going to be over 24 next Wednesday. I, I, I think if you had shorted those and you get out of them for two and a half cents, get out of them for two and a half cents. Um, yesterday, uh, Thursday, somebody sold 150 of the July 26th, 15 calls for a buck 67. Uh, the future was at 1592 and the spot was at 1555. Uh, kind of a tight spread between the future and the spot there, considering. July 26th, that far out. And then finally today, uh, there there have been a couple of trades I really couldn't get a handle on, uh, but this is an interesting trade. Somebody sold 250 of the July 5th, 15 calls for 13 cents and bought 250 of the 18 calls for three cents. Uh, the future is at 1400 when they are four and the spot was at 1303. Uh, can't tell because we're not seeing the day over day change in open interest. I think this is a cover though. I think somebody is is getting out of um, a bull call spread they had on and have just decided to throw in the towel and enjoy the long weekend. And we all enjoy a little bit of Russell's weekly rundown. Well done. I do like the, all that uh, yeah, July 5th now. upside going on up there. That's yeah. That does make me wonder what's what's cooking <laughs> over the July 4th holiday. Intriguing stuff here, listeners. It's always fun to have Russell's weekly rundown here on the show. Let's get out some of the big VIX mothership rundown now. And like we said, today, not exactly a banger day. A little bit of a little bit shy of half a million contracts on the tape right now. The big dog today, 61,000 of the July 15s going up out there today. Interesting, interesting strike. Right behind it, we have 40,000 almost exactly of the October 45, so less interesting, more head-scratching there. Number three, 30,000 of the July 20s, also 30,000 for number four of the AUG 47 halves. And then rounding out the top five today, 23,000 of the July 15 puts. So the 15 strike all the rage out there today. Yesterday, pretty freaking anemic day. We haven't seen a day this light in a while in Vixland, this is more, I would say, uh, a late August kind of uh, volume day or heading into a holiday weekend, which we kind of are, but you might expect to see this paper today as opposed to yesterday. Uh, 360,000 contracts on the tape, so a very light day. One of the lightest days we've seen in Vix in some time. The big dog, such as it was yesterday, about 22,000 of the July 21s, followed by 20,000 of the AUG 14 puts. Number three, 15,000 of the July 30s. Number four, 11,000 of the July 47 halves and rounding out the top five on a pretty anemic day, 11,000 of the July 45. So maybe a bit of a vertical there, 45, 47 half, 11,000 times, in which case 
I think the Rock Lobster would call that a kiss in your sister trade. Wednesday, 680,000 contracts on the tape, so a little bit more action. The big dog on Wednesday, 44,000 of the July 17s, followed by number two, 35,000 of the Aug 25s, number three, 34,000 of the November 40s. Also interesting, so if the Oc 45s didn't interest you, allow me to submit the Nov 40s for your perusal. Number four, 29,000 of the July 18s, and rounding out the top five on a decently active Wednesday, 25,000 of, of the July 13 puts. Easy for me to say. You will notice so far, listeners, we have not eclipsed that ADV, which is why it's moving in the wrong direction this week. Tuesday, 566,000 contracts on the tape. The big dog, 25,000. Of the July 14 puts, followed by 24,000 of the Nov 47 half. So there are some interesting upside strikes sneaking in here this week. Number three, 17,000 of the July 18s. Number four, 17,000 as well of the July 15 puts. And rounding out the top five, 16,000 of the October 50s, the 5 O's. And Monday, 463,000 contracts on the tape. Most of that, 75,000 coming in the November 47 half. So Yeah, a smattering of very interesting strikes sneaking in here this week, followed by a distant number two, only 28,000 of the July 30s. Number three, 25,000 of the Nov 30s. A lot of 30 love on Monday as well. Number four, 16,000 of the July 15 puts. And rounding out the top five on Monday, 15,000 of the July 16 puts. Uh, Mr. Rock Lobster, anything catching your eye out there this week, including what are your thoughts on some of these a funkier strike, 75,000 of the no 47 halves. We have the no 40s going up 34,000 times. We had my favorite before, the October 45s going up 40,000. So a lot of interesting longer-term upside going up this week, sir. What say you? That stuff has always been a curiosity to me. Well, because one is I like to play in the 30 to 60-day VIX because that long-term stuff just is a kind of – I just don't have the patience for it. Like I could be dead by the time those calls <laughs> perform. Um, so, you know, I, and I, and I realize they must have be structuring something kind of more long-term, uh, on it or they're, or they're, or, uh, like Matt, you know, he likes playing out there too, because it's most of the money is made by, you just get a like vol vol of all just blows up and, you know, and then the calls become something. So, I mean, I, I can see that also you, you look at the no thirties being only a buck 30, and and just from a historical perspective, like how am I going to lose on those? Because you, <laughs> it would be rough to believe you wouldn't get some kind of move to the mid twenties, and then those things would pay something, right? Probably double, there maybe. You go. There's play. Russell's next six month vol trade right there. Just buying the no thirties, bam, done. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and I, you know, in my, like, so for a lot of the stuff I do, I like, I like because I like the uh, the fact that you get so much future premium in the front end and it just melts so fast, you know, on a weekly basis, um, for a trade and that finances a lot of my other shenanigans. Um, so at least from a put side, I almost like I trade VIX kind of probably the opposite everybody else does. I just view VIX puts pays for all kinds of other stuff. And then I take that money and I go spend it on other things. Um, so as long as we're in tangle like this, I like, I, I buy as many VIX puts as I can, and then I go buy spy puts and spy calls and VIX calls and just have a smorgasbord because I figure VIX is going to pay me big money down the bullet, finance some of this other, uh, let's just call it uh, less informed style trades. Um, <laughs> so this was probably came from an idea that Russell gave me like five or six years ago uh, when he said, you know, when the future premium is X over a normal number. That's when I started doing a little more fudging around. And I'm like, wow, yeah, you can actually buy some stuff with that. So anyway, it's all Russell's fault, but I got to thank it was a good idea. Um, so, um, That's but like- anyway, <laughs> well, I, well, he's like, well, wait, I was invoked. What are, what are you talking well, about? Uh, no, I'm, I'm listening. I'm just letting, I didn't want to interrupt you. So, um, so as say- far as this far term stuff, like I, I don't know what people do. Maybe they're, you know, and I could see you're like doing some of that, maybe buying some long-term spy calls or something, something of that nature, like kind of long, long, just sort of let let the movie play, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that could be reasonable, but as as I, you know, a lot of times with some of this stuff, I see it go up. Um, like Russell was, 
it's like kind of you just shake your head and go, what the, what the hell do I expect to happen with that option trade? But maybe they have maybe they have insights that I I do not know. At the end of the day, we can just say for every episode, it's always Russell's fault. At yeah. the end of the day, and you know what? Speaking of what just really, like, just like just like my household, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what clearly is your fault is getting our listeners into SVIX, which I guess is a good thing because this thing has done <sighs> done nothing but hit new highs, Mister Rhodes, uh, since we started talking about here on the net. Twenty eight and a quarter right now, up another one and a half points. So that's probably another new all time high. I haven't checked, but if not, it's pretty freaking close. Uh, so SVIX continuing to print money for the once and future Dr. VIX there. Uh, 3,100 contracts on the tape today. What caught my eye, though, kind of interesting. I saw somebody, there's a big print going up today of a couple of thousand of the AUG 9 puts. Someone's blasting away at the AUG 9 puts for a dime. I don't know what surprised me more, more that people are selling the puts out there or that they're getting a dime for the AUG 9 puts. It's not a bad level. <laughs> So, uh, I was intrigued by that for some reason. That kind of caught my eye. So if you want to join that parte, listeners, a 2,000 of the AUG 9 puts going up for a dime right now. I think a lot of people would pick up some SVIX back around a dime. All, maybe it's the same guy, Russell, who's buying all those July 5th upside. He's also selling these puts in SVIX. He's like, hey, I'll, I'll pick up some SVIX down there once VIX explodes and, and SVIX is wiped away. So uh, what's catching your eye out there in your chief holding SVIX, Mr. Rhodes? In aspect, um, you know, I I continue. Wow, um, I'm I'm looking at the looking at the, somebody just sold a bunch of the 37 calls that expire at the uh, expire next month in the <laughs> market as well. Goodness gracious! Um, so no, I'm I I think short ball makes sense for a long long term hold. Um, hopefully, unlike Andrew, I do think I'm going to live a little bit longer. So I'm okay with a long-term holding like that. Uh, I do. You, I've heard you mention when I'm not on that I do periodically sell calls against it. Uh, I never sell more than uh, more than more calls than a quarter of my position against it. So I I always have a position in there. Uh, in fact, right now I don't even have uh, short calls against a quarter of it just because some of them just expired last week and I haven't really gotten around to figuring out what price level I'd be willing to sell new calls at. I, I got a couple of 28s in July that are short, and that's about it right now. Um, so there, I, I wouldn't mind seeing. I don't know what would what would cause me to sell more calls at this point. I, I, I'm having a very difficult time coming up with any real reason that we're going to get a volatility spike in the next couple of months, but typically that's when it happens. So I really didn't even want to say that out loud because because it might come back to haunt me. <laughs> but <I'm, laughs> of course, that's also you know. selling the two thousand of the Aug nine puts for a dime today, right? That's probably you getting in some more on the downside there. That's say uh, you know me and Mr. Buffett, our favorite ways to work into <laughs> longs. Your, sell puts. Your favorite way, indeed. One of our was our <laughs> formerly our least favorite. Now people are loving it again. It's VXX uh, giving up the ghost again this week. I saw our buddy Jim Carroll tweeting about how uh, weekly puts and VXX have been paying off. Huge uh, for every week for the last couple of months, so he's loving them out there. Or somebody is that uh, he's retweeting. Uh, VXX twenty four eighty when we kicked off the show down about one and a half points. Uh, twenty eight thousand contracts on the tape. The ADV sixty six thousand unchanged. I'm kind of flying through this, listeners, because I want to get to some of your questions and comments for the crystal ball as well. Uh, really quickly, the top position right now in VXX is twenty one thousand of the July forty calls. Uh, that caught my eye because that's new. That was just opened. This past week, somebody came in and bought 20,000 of these bad boys for prices around 30 cents. So, uh, you like those listeners? The VXX July 40s for 30 cents? I don't know. VXX seems hellbent on moving aggressively in the other direction. If I was going to play a vol pop, I don't know if VXX is the vehicle I would go for, but somebody clearly wants some 21,000 of these bad boys open right now. That's the top position for size. In VXX. I'm curious what you folks think. Speaking of what you folks think, really quickly, let's get to a little bit of the old volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779 669 4 VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options. 
or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, a bunch of questions to get to. We got a bunch coming in the live chat too. So obviously you folks get bumped to the top of the list. Let's go here to people asking about the markets. We already talked about about that. People saying the holiday weekend, Tuesday, Nichols, kind of agreeing with us, this Tuesday holiday is making it a little hard to trade ball right now. Yeah, it's a little weird, this kind of Tuesday day, and then, of course, the half day on Monday. Uh, Russell, folks, are loving you in the live chat. Option God saying it's nice to have Russell back, and also saying he's noted that he needs to ask that question again for your next pro Q&A, so look, look forward to that question coming back about uh, all things next six months, hedging ball, hedging VIX. Uh, Frank1209 says, good to hear about SPKX and Spikey again. I haven't talked about them in a while. Yeah, you're right, because they haven't really been doing a lot of paper. But uh, now that they're at least spiky doing a little bit of something, maybe we can move them into the rotation again. Of course, we had the Spikes Father on the Pro Q&A recently as well, Mr. Simon Ho. So listen to that if you haven't heard that, listeners. Uh, and then we got uh, Z2313 saying, There should be a forum where buyers and sellers can connect, debate, or an in, do an in-person, de- in-person deal. <laughs> You're going to meet in the back alley say, Hey, you got those mixed puts? Yeah, here you go, boy. <laughs> that would be interesting. But there are, there are obviously, if you're doing a lot, a decent amount of size, you're going to get shows from brokers. So that's kind of where most of that stuff happens uh, on IM on, and things like that, where they're giving shows to their standard clients. So if you're doing enough size, a Z, Z2313, you will get those shows. Fortunately, if you're out there doing the 10 lots, not really. But we, we, we are talking about adding a Discord to this. So that could certainly be a form where a lot of our traders can talk. Can't really trade in person or can't really execute trades amongst each other that way. You can't match them up, but uh, it could be interesting nonetheless. Uh, Nichols likes that idea. He says uh, he likes that. He wants to have that in person. <laughs> the notion of trading your VIX in person in a back alley just brings a smile to my face. Of course, everyone could go down to the VIX pit. I was just down there recently with the flow mass. Not a heck of a lot going on down there, but intriguing nonetheless. As we keep on rolling, we're coming up against it. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the crystal ball. All right, everybody, welcome to the crystal ball. Let's get right into it. I was I wanted to go higher last week, and I, I held myself back. Listen, I kept myself at the 1260, and lo and behold, Vic's still hanging out a little bit north of 13, right about a 1310 right now, so... No joy for me. No joy really for anybody. Mark was fading it to the downside. He was doing his palindromic nonsense at 1221. Uh, Mr. Matt, uh, the Oracle of New Hampshire there for 1340 on the show last week. So no joy for him. Looking at some of our live listeners, I don't see any exact 13 handle. Nichols had an 11 handle. Man, my goodness. You were really fading ball last week. Uh, No joy for the pro listeners. I'll have our producers go through and make sure that there are no winner, winner, chicken dinners. Matt was the closest, such as it was. He and I were kind of equidistant on distance, different sides, really. Uh, but no joy for either of us. That means our guest, Mr. Rhodes, gets to go first. Mr. Rhodes, what are you thinking for this time next week from a ball perspective, sir? Oh, now, now see, I want to, I, I, 1331, just to, just, just to be like Mark Sebastian. I was going to say, are you wearing the Mark Sebastian hat today? Is that what you're I doing? am. <laughs> Palindromic it's, it's, nonsense. It doesn't work for him. It? Why not try it for yourself? <laughs> yeah, I've tried, I've tried everything else. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's go. Let's all do yeah. Vic's palindromes today. Mr. Mr. Uh, Rock Lobster, sir, what are you feeling for this time next week? I, I don't know. I wanted something historical. When was the Magna Carta? Uh, oh, jeez. I think was that it was twelve eighteen. I think that was like thirteen hundred. I was going. To, I was going to go thirteen hundred something. Like that. Oh really? I, I was. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm feeling twelve fifteen. Twelve fifteen. Twelve fifteen. Oh, there we go. Twelve fifteen. So that's June, where we're going. June twelve fifteen. Oh, twelve fifteen. Right. I'm going to say we're out of this whole regime, <laughs> and that's it. Twelve fifteen. All right. I was just going to do. I was going to do the palindromic nonsense fun as well of twelve twenty one. But since you're going twelve fifteen, that kind of yeah, well, you, you know 14, I, I, that doesn't give me a lot of joy. So you tell you what, I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little bit of breathing room, sir. I will, I will bump it up a dime. I will go twelve thirty one to give you a little bit of breathing room. So there, you go. I'm a point exactly below Mr. Rhodes. I'm about point one six above the Rock Lobster, the Magna Carta. I did not think that was going to be. And the listeners be. all know what that's called. Our vol. At least you, at least you had the guts to scum me for sixteen. 
ticks and not just one. Never let it there be said go. I was not a nice guy. I, I let you. I let you roll along. Twelve. I was going to think it was thirteen hundred. So twelve fifteen. There we go. Ten sixty six. Obviously the biggest date in English history. Everything outside of that kind of just uh, fades into distant memory. But there you go, listeners. Our vol inspiration for this week: <laughs> the Magna Carta. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that in our hearts and in our heads, that will conclude our broadcast week. For you on-demand folks, for you pro folks, hang out. I'll be back in a little bit with the once in future. Actually, no, I'll take it back. With the, no, not with me. The, with, the, with, the, with, the, <laughs> with the rock lobster to break down all sorts of ball fun. But before we go, Mr. Once and Future, Dr. Vix, if folks want to check out your sub stack, which will now be disappointingly blank. No ball trades to update. What are you going to write about? talk about? Um, no, I, I have a Substack under my name, just russellrose.substack.com. I'm I'm close to officially landing somewhere new, uh, even though I'm officially still with EQ Derivatives. Uh, hopefully, I'll have something really big to report the next time I'm on with you. There you go. I look forward to that. Big. And of course, really we already, big. We already really have your big. first question ready for your next pro Q and A section. Option God already has it queued up, so get ready for that next six months of upside VIX hedging, sir. It's coming coming your way <laughs> and mr Ro- or mr i should say i keep getting you guys confused today mr rock lobster sir when you're not studying english history where, where should folks go to learn more about your vol musing sir yes vol musing vol trades we have so many like uh op mentoring now trade desk i got the weekly profit cycles and money map and uh our pro course all that stuff uh, oh my gosh! So uh, optionpit.com eight 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 trade zero one, and if you listen to this show, because we like Mark Longo and his in, in his uh, option radio conglomerate global global empire, we'll call it. You get ten percent off. Just say you listen to this show. Uh, so eight 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 trade zero one. Our customer care team is there to help. They're there to help, and you too can debate the signing of the Magna Carta with the Rock Lobster over there in the land of the pit. Looking really quickly, we got a lot of 12 handles coming in in our pro. We've got some 13 handles popping in, too. 13.40 for Option God. Frank said a 12.70. Nichols, 13.10. You had 11 handle last week, listeners, or Nichols, so you're, you're popping up a bit. Options Queen, she's been scarily precise. She's at a 12. Everyone's hanging out close to that 13 level. Uh, interesting. She's saying she had that's her uh, that's her outlook, not for any other silly reason like the Magna Carta. So there you go. Just clarifying that. I love all of that. I want to thank all of you for joining us this week from the Southern Studio. Like I said, for you on-demand folks, that will conclude our broadcast week. For all you pro folks, hang out. I'll be back in a little less than an hour with the Rock Lobster to break down a pretty intriguing week. I know I know he's champing at the bit to break down all those Apple calls. We'll get to that and a whole bunch more coming up on Options Oddities. You folks can check it out if you're not on the pro side. Theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Otherwise, remember, uh, no shows on Monday. Market's kind of truncated. we got a weird week, and I'm not a monster to make people do shows on those days. So no shows on Monday. But we're back again next week with our regular slate of shows, I should say. On Wednesday with good old Options Boot Camp. Thursday, of course, our usual offering. And then back again on Friday, another episode of Volatility Views. Stay safe out there, everybody. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. 